This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 27th day of November in the year 2018. Here's what we're tracking tonight. In a major move that is likely to shake up the banking landscape in Guyana and across the Caribbean, Scotiabank's headquarters in Toronto has announced that the bank will be selling out its banking operations in Guyana and eight other Caribbean countries to Republic Holdings Limited, which owns Republic Bank. According to a report from the Reuters news agency, Scotia plans to sell its banking operations in Anguilla, Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Martin and St. Vincent and the Grenadines to Republic Financial Holdings. However, for its operations in Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica, the bank intends to refocus its business in the region by selling its insurance operations in those two countries to the Sajikor Financial Corporation. According to Reuters, the Bank of Nova Scotia today reported fourth quarter earnings, which were marginally below expectations, and said it planned to exit nine countries in the Caribbean as part of a shakeup of that business. The bank has been in operation in the Caribbean since 1889. The transactions will be subject to regulatory approvals, according to Scotia Bank. The bank's international business increased earnings by 18% during the year, driven by growth in the Pacific Alliance trading bloc, which comprises Peru, Mexico, Chile, and Colombia, and accounts for around a quarter of its revenues. Scotia Bank is the first of Canada's major banks to report fourth quarter earnings. Meanwhile, this afternoon, the Ministry of Finance indicated that along with the governments of Guyana and the Bank of Guyana, it will be carefully considering several issues that will be related to the move by Republic Bank to acquire Scotiabank, as announced earlier today by the two banks. In its statement, the Finance Ministry said the agreement raises a number of issues for the banking sector in Guyana and for the public. According to the Finance Ministry, Republic Bank currently holds 35.4% of the banking system's assets and 36.8% of deposits in Guyana. The acquisition of Scotia Bank would up Republic Bank's stake in the local banking sector to 51% of both assets and deposits. The Finance Ministry said such an acquisition raises concerns about an overconcentration of banking services, market domination, and the too big to fail risk. Additionally, there is a concern about the effect on competition and the potential for Republic Bank to have too much influence on pricing of banking products and rates. The Finance Ministry has also indicated that the agreement would also raise some issues related to correspondent banking options, and there could also be a loss of jobs as there could be a move to consolidate the branches. According to the Finance Ministry, the Scotiabank decision, which comes at a time when Ghana's economy is on the cusp of financial transformation with the onset of a massive new oil and gas sector, raises concerns and is regretted. The Ministry has emphasized that the move is not Guyana-specific and is part of a region-wide refocusing by Scotiabank. The agreement, however, is subject to all regulatory approvals. The Ministry of Finance reminded that the Financial Institutions Act has clear stipulations regarding acquisition of control and requires approval of the Bank of Guyana following the submission of applications and due diligence being conducted. More news coming up in a moment. Christmas big, plus size big, big things big, we can big, yeah. It's GTT Christmas, Merry plus size Christmas. Christmas big, plus size big, big things big, we can big, yeah. It's GTT Christmas, Merry plus size Christmas, yeah. We giving you, we giving you, yeah. We giving you, we giving you. It's GTT Christmas, Merry plus size Christmas, yeah. We giving you, we giving you, yeah. We giving you, we giving you. Ho, ho, ho! It's the GTT Plus Size Christmas. There's always more to love with GTT. Terms and conditions apply. See gtt.co.gy for details. This Christmas, get a loan for your dream car with an extended repayment term. Spruce up your home with that renovation you always wanted and take advantage of low or no down payment. Get new appliances so you can cook up a storm. You'll get same-day approval. Plus, you can win a getaway to a destination of your choice. Visit RepublicGuyana.com today to find out how. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Get ready to ride it, ride it. Ready to ride it, ride it, ride it, ride it, ride it, ride the wave. Open up the new vibe, drink up the bonus inside. Radical and fresh and wild, catch the wave now. Ride bold, ride fresh, ride strong. Come on, ride the wave, taste the action, 
satisfaction, perfection the new wave of excitement sweeping Guyana. Wave Pale Ale, a premium, full-bodied, strong, and refreshing alcoholic brew, crafted to perfection for a bold, young, radical you. Don't settle for anything less. Catch a Wave Pale Ale and ride it today. Wave Pale Ale. Crafted to perfection. Welcome back. Opposition leader Barrett Jack Dio is not too happy with the budget. He said his party will address many of the concerns in the budget when the debates begin next week. But at a press conference last evening, Mr. Jack Dio said there is no good life being offered in the budget and his party cannot support it. This is not a budget. It was just, um, as I said before, sterile uh, um, and full of platitudes. Platitude, just hoping that they can deceive the, the people of this country by talking for a very long period. Jack Dew accused the government of producing a visionless budget that does not offer much to citizens, according to him. Creating the impression in the minds of the populace that this is going to happen and then undermining it all by saying, we, have a, we are now studying that, we have a plan to do this. We will, we will be doing a feasibility study for it. The timeline for implementation of much of this budget goes way into the next five years from now, and some of them may never happen. The opposition leader said there is not much in the budget that speaks to job creation or provides comfort for the business community. He told reporters that the budget has failed to provide jobs and create a stimulus for businesses. According to Jack Dio, the government has mostly ignored some of his party's suggestions, and he expected a better budget that would have offered much more to the people of Guyana. And the Alliance for Change is throwing its full support behind the 2019 budget and has commended the finance minister for its presentation. Party officials today said the measures in the budget target small business development, growth and expansion, and persons living with disabilities, and those are welcomed. Presenting Ghana's largest budget totaling 300.7 billion dollars one in which is designed to bring relief and benefits to we the people of Ghana. It's important if we want to develop as a nation obviously to be invest heavily in these types of um, sectors education infrastructure and so on so that's that's actually a pleasant surprise we welcome that. The AFC said it looks forward to the full and complete implementation of budget 2019. Turning now to the education sector, Finance Minister Winston Jordan announced on Monday that the government plans to invest $52.2 billion in the education sector next year. He said that represents a 15.6% increase over the 2018 allocation. According to the minister, the budget will address disparities in the education sector, such as bridging the gap between coastal and hinterland education delivery. The use of smart classrooms will be expanded throughout the country, yes. with Santa Rosa and Paramakatai Secondary Schools being among the priority schools for 2019. Providing and upgrading IT labs in primary schools will continue, targeting schools in Region 6 and Georgetown. Additionally, there will be upgrades and provision for new science laboratories at Laborn Intention and, Pl and Pleasant Secondary Schools as part of the Ministry of Education's emphasis on STEAM. The Finance Minister also noted that programs to reduce bullying and violence in schools as well as other social problems will be expanded to ensure regular school attendance. Programs to reduce bullying and violence as well as other social problems in schools will be expanded to ensure regular school attendance. In this regard, two mobile welfare units will be introduced to expand access to a wider student population. Importantly, the school feeding program across the country will be expanded with an additional 9,545 students expected to benefit. He also announced that smart classrooms will be expanded across the country and several new programs will be introduced to target various communities. The University of Ghana will receive over $3 billion to aid in its operations and several schools are to be repaired while new ones will be constructed next year. 
In the world of politics, when the elected councillors for the city of Georgetown meet for their first sitting, they'll have to elect a new mayor and deputy mayor from among themselves. Multiple sources within the APNU, which will have the majority on the council, have indicated that Patricia Chase Green, the current mayor, will not be returning as the city's chief citizen. Although she was the highest single vote getter and had just concluded local government elections. Party officials say they are looking for a new start and a fresh start. There are reports that a number of candidates are being looked at for the top two spots. And while the chairperson of the People's National Congress, Valda Lawrence, appears to be leaning towards one particular candidate, the rest of the party might be leaning in other directions. New source understands that Lawrence is likely to push political newcomer Pandit Ubraj Narine for the position of mayor. He was the first past the post winner from constituency number one in the Georgetown local government area. Narine is not well known within the walls of Congress Place and City Hall, but his grandfather Pritam Singh once served as a member of parliament for the People's National Congress. He was also a big supporter of Miss Lawrence during her successful run to become the chairperson of the People's National Congress. The PNC reform is the largest party in the APNU. Other senior party members have expressed worry that Singh might not be the best candidate to take over the mayorship at this time. Some have explained that Councillor Alfred Mentor, who has gained some experience over the past two years on the council, might be a stronger choice for the post of mayor. Another councillor being looked at is Gregory Fraser. He could also find himself as a good pick for mayor. Other party sources have said that they would like to see the party's central executive committee offer guidance on who the councillors should elect to the post and not just leave it up to the party's top leaders. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting.